I have here sentences. Each sentence has a word that may not be familiar to you. So, let us picture it out. For each word, there is a corresponding picture that will give you a hint to come up with the meaning of the word. Use the picture and the context clues in the sentence for you to figure out easily the meaning of the word. Is everything clear? Yes, teacher. Ending me on the shepherd. Number one is shepherd. Based on the picture, the shepherd is a person whose job is to take care of the sheep. As his flock he guarded. Number two is flock. Based on the picture, flock is a group under the guidance of a leader. To be glade on Latmus. Number three is Latmus. Based on the picture, Latmus is the name of a mountain in Anatolia. Good morning, teacher. Before we start, let us have first our objectives. Mr. Sablada, will you please read our objectives? Objectives. At the end of the lesson, 100% of the students with 75% level of proficiency will be able to 1. Determine the different pronouns, its antecedents, and some rules that govern pronouns and antecedents. 2. Use confidently the different pronoun in English, both oral and written form. 3. Construct sentences using different pronouns that agree with its antecedents. Let us now have our warm-up activity. It is called Pass the Pen. For this activity, you will be divided into two groups. All you have to do is to trace the sentences till you reach the finish line. Choose the best five members from your group who will play the game. You will only be given two minutes for this activity, and the group with the most number of correct sentences will be the winner of the game. Are we all clear? Yes, teacher. Obviously, the winner is Group 1. Did you enjoy the game? Yes, teacher. Now, let me introduce to you to a friend. A friend so dear not only to me, but also to each and every one of us here. Let us take a look at the answer key. And let us analyze the sentences, because this is where we can find the friend I am talking about. What have you noticed with the sentences that we have here? There are highlighted words in the sentences, and the highlighted words are pronouns. That is correct. And today, we will discuss the different kinds of pronouns its antecedents, and the rules that govern them. So, the friend I am referring to is a part of speech, and they help us deviate from repetition of nouns. Will you tell something more about our friend to the class? Ma'am, pronouns are the words that replace nouns or noun phrases. That is correct. I have here part of a poem taken from the Greek mythology by Edith Hamilton, 1942. This is a part of the poem originally written by the 3rd century poet Theophrytus, 
and another version by John Keats in 1818, which obviously he based from the original version of the Greek mythology. Let us watch a short video, and afterward, let us silently read a poem entitled Endymion. I have here sentences. Each sentence has a word that may not be familiar to you. So let us picture it out. For each word, there is a corresponding picture that will give you a hint to come up with the meaning of the word. Use the picture and the context clues in the sentence for you to figure out easily the meaning of the word. Is everything clear? Yes, teacher. And Dimion the Shepherd. Number one is Shepherd. Based on the picture, the Shepherd is a person whose job is to take care of the sheep. As his flock he guarded. Number two is Flock. Based on the picture, Flock is a group under the guidance of a leader. To be great on Latmus. Number three is Latmus. Based on the picture, Latmus is the name of a mountain in Anatolia. Evermore, he slumbers. 
Number four is slumbers. Based on the picture, slumber is to sleep lightly. Let us take a look at the sentences from the myth entitled Endemune. Can you identify the pronouns in the sentence? Yes, he and whose, although it is not mentioned in the sentence, by using he, we may say that it replaces the name of a boy, and it is singular. Yes, that is true. In this sentence, there is missing because the noun which the pronoun replaces is not mentioned. Do you think it is okay? No, teacher, because the reader might be confused who is that he being referred to in the sentence. And what do we call the noun or noun phrase being replaced by the pronoun? Antecedent or referent. In this sentence, we have used the so-called dummy pronoun. Do you have any idea what is dummy pronoun? A dummy pronoun is a function of a pronoun. It is used whenever the noun or noun phrase is unknown. It is already understood or otherwise not to be mentioned or spoken directly. Yes, that is correct. In this sentence, we have subject dummy pronoun because the antecedent of the pronoun, he, is not yet known to us. What rule can you give from this example? Rule that has something to do with the personal pronoun and its antecedent. The antecedent must be clear to everyone, either implicitly or explicitly. In addition, both pronoun and antecedent must agree in gender and in number. Will you tell what kind of pronoun is he? He is a personal pronoun. It takes the place of a noun or noun phrase or what we call antecedent or referent. How about the pronoun whose? What kind of pronoun is it? And what is its antecedent in the sentence? Whose is an example of relative pronoun and its antecedent is the pronoun he in the sentence. Relative pronouns are words that introduce the group of words that act as an adjective. Since it is an adjective, it modifies or describes a noun or pronoun. The relative and interrogative pronoun. The relative pronoun introduces a group of words that acts as an adjective, while the interrogative pronoun introduces a question. Very well said. In addition, for the relative and interrogative pronoun, we should remember this. What is never a relative pronoun, and that is never an interrogative pronoun. And the general rule for pronoun agreement is that a singular antecedent requires a singular pronoun, and a plural antecedent requires a plural pronoun, as well as the gender. Use the appropriate gender for each antecedent. Is everything clear? Yes, teacher. Here is another sentence. Sentence number two. Will you identify the pronouns here in this sentence and their antecedent? Some here is singular because it refers to singular antecedent poet. While most here is plural because of its antecedent them, which is plural. Indefinite pronoun may or may not have an antecedent. Also, it may be singular, plural, and some may be both. Yes, that is true. Here is another sentence. Theocritus and John Kitts had their own version of the poem ending yon. There is a personal pronoun. Antecedent is Theocritus and John, which is an example of compound noun. Each Greek poet and English poet had his own version of the poem and dimion. Each is indefinite pronoun. It is singular, so it takes he as its personal pronoun, and the antecedent of he is each Greek poet and English poet. It becomes singular because of the indefinite pronoun each and every. Yes, that is true. Each and every are singular and can strong arm an otherwise plural antecedent to become singular. Let us have our next sentence. The underlined words, not only, but, also, is correlative conjunction which gives us two separate antecedents. In such cases, it may bring confusion whether we will use singular or plural pronoun. 
The closer antecedent of the two given antecedents is the one that we will consider in choosing the pronoun to be used. Yes, that is true. Let us have our next sentence. Everyone is a singular indefinite pronoun, and it is in the third person, so the personal pronoun should take third person too. That is correct. However, we may find inclusive construction a bit awkward, though it maintains the pronoun agreement and this avoid offending one gender, this construction wrecked the cadence of a good sentence. If you have noticed, professional writing such as essay, movie, or book review, the writers will seldom, if ever, use a phrase like he or she. Instead, they make the antecedent plural so that they can use the natural sounding they, them, or their. So let us take a look at the next example. That here is not an example of relative pronoun, but an example of relative adverb, which introduces adverbial clause and modifies verb, adverb, or adjective. The second that is a demonstrative pronoun, replacing the underlying part of the sentence, while the first that is a demonstrative adjective, which specifies the noun youth. That is correct. Do you have any clarification or questions? None, teacher. Let us proceed to our next sentence. The first herself is an emphatic or intensifier pronoun which adds intensity or gives emphasis on the noun Celine the Moon, while the second herself is a reflexive pronoun which serves as the reflector or the subject in the sentence, which is also Celine the Moon. Very well said. How about the next sentence? The majority and minority are examples of collective noun. Collective noun can be singular or plural depending on its member. Whether the member acts in unison, meaning everyone in the group is doing the same thing at the same time, then it is singular, or acts individually, which makes the collective noun plural, thus requires plural pronoun. Very good! Now, for our last sentence. Although the word books in this sentence is plural, still, it uses the pronoun its, which is singular because the Warner Books here is the name of the publishing company. The rule is unlike collective nouns, named businesses, schools, and organizations are always singular. That is correct. Do you have any questions or clarifications? None, teacher. If none, let's have another activity. I have here a list of indefinite pronoun. Here is what you are going to do. Pick one piece of paper, show it to the class, and then use it in the sentence. But you have to identify whether it is singular, plural, or both, depending on how you have used it in your example sentence. Is everything clear? Yes, teacher. What I pick here is all. All of the students learn different pronouns today. All is plural and its antecedent is students. What I pick here is she. She used indefinite pronoun in her sentence. She is a personal pronoun and it is singular. Did you enjoy the game? Yes, teacher! Do you have any clarification or questions? None, teacher! If not, we can now proceed to our generalization. So, based on what we have discussed for today, would you share some insight you have gained from our discussion and activities? What can you say about the topic and the activities that we've had done? I have learned that the mastery of the different pronouns, which are eight in all need to have their antecedents either implicitly or explicitly stated. I have learned that these pronouns and antecedents are guided by the rules which will make them agree in terms of gender, number, proximity, and the likes. 
Also, I have learned that with these pronouns, either written or orally, used just like with the myth that we have read, may add beauty, brevity, and clarity to the written text, as well as to oral communication, refraining us from awkwardness of repeating the noun or noun phrase. I am really glad that you have really learned a lot today. For our evaluation, I have here another version of The Myth and the Myon by Lillian Stilton Hyde. All you have to do is to encircle the best pronoun from the parenthesis. There are 20 items and you will have 20 minutes to answer the quiz. All of you got the answers correctly. Very good. For your assignment, in one whole sheet of paper, retell the meat in your own words. Use at least 10 pronouns or, if possible, as many pronouns as you can. Then, underline the antecedent and box the pronouns. On the left margin of the paper, leave at least 1.5 inches where you will identify the kind of pronoun that you have used. For the rubrics, kindly look at the board. Do you have any clarification or questions? None, teacher! Is everything clear? Yes, teacher.